Welcome back for another video to help you decide what to eat for dinner. We're certainly happy to help you answer this most difficult question in life. For this week's video, we're eating some of our fanciest food yet. It was almost too beautiful to eat and so light that my western palate was desperately searching for some carbohydrates. Boy, did the post-meal Baskin Robbins sure hit the spot. Kimchi joked that she wasn't leading me to dinner, but rather to stab me to death and leave me in a dumpster in the dark alley. This video got created, so no, you don't have to send a search party. This time. Bidnal Bean, the Japanese-inspired raw fish restaurant for today, is located down such a dark alley not far from Busan Tower. I don't know about you, but I always love finding hidden gems like these when I travel abroad. Lucky for us, this place isn't too far from our doorstep. The first floor of this restaurant is a dedicated sushi bar, where the sushi maestro composes your fishy meal right in front of your eyes. One floor above has only a few tatami floored rooms with slider doors for your drinking and eating privacy. We were incredibly lucky to get one of the few available private rooms for our experience. The room instantly transported us back to the country where we first met, Japan. Bidnal Bean has an extensive menu of treasures from the sea. Golden Japanese beer on tap, the purest sake, and other Japanese delights. There are several different platters of sashimi with varying types, quality, and sizes to choose from. It really only depends on whether your budget is oceanic or more pond-like, just like ours. If you need a few carbs with your meal like me, they have a sushi menu with futomaki, think gimbap or a more uniform style roll, and everyone's favorite, salmon. For sides, they have your typical fried Japanese sushi accessories, tempura, karage, and my favorite, koroke. A bit more substantially, Bidnal Bean has a section dedicated to other Japanese-style dishes on the menu. You can get stews, grilled fish, and several other dishes. For drinks, they have Suntory Highballs, Ebisu Beer, Sake, and pretty much anything else in the form of liquor and soft drinks you could ever want. Kimchi and I began our meal with the provided salad to share and tiny individual bowls of miso soup. Kimchi started putting the beer back right away. I was tempted this time by one of my all-time favorite beers in Japan, Ebisu, which Bidden Albin had on tap. The main dish of the evening was a small but nonetheless vibrant plate of sashimi. There's quite the variety on this plate, so allow me to introduce to you some of my guild friends. Do shrimp have gills? I don't know either, but they sure were tender and sweet. You can't help but feel sorry for the little guys, especially when they're staring right back at you. Probably the second favorite fish of humanity, the salmon was soft, fatty, and paired perfectly with the spicy bite of wasabi. Ah, the chicken of the sea, and a human favorite. This tuna belly was as soft and buttery as fish come. Its marbled surface, was a thing of beauty. Sometimes I wish they gave Flounder in The Little Mermaid a different name. You have to swallow your childhood guilt with every bite of this delicious fish. Visually, Flounder is ghostly and nearly translucent, but the flavor is excellent. I can see why this is a Korean favorite. One of the most difficult fish to consume raw. This shortly fermented mackerel isn't for everyone. In order to even eat this guy, they have to remove some of the stank with vinegar. It was fishy, so we ended up cooking ours in another dish. Honestly, some fish are better off being grilled. Commonly referred to as yellowtail, this fish is actually not related in any way to tuna. Its other, probably more accurate name is Japanese amberjack. We had both the belly and back meat on our plate of sea creatures. The belly meat was one of the priciest fish we had during this meal. It was surprisingly springy and flavorful. Here in this Dixie cup lie the remains of our old friend the sea cucumber. This bizarre dish is basically a shot of salted sea cucumber innards. I'm just going to say no to this one. 
Not the most exciting dish for my Western palate, butanabe is a wintry Japanese stew that's meant to warm and comfort. It's sliced pork with cabbage and other vegetables and broth. This dish is a bit of a sleeper for me. I guess it's healthy though. I can't remember the name of this fish, but it certainly was bony. If you like the feeling of swallowing a bag of freshly cut toenail clippings, this is the fish for you. It splintered my esophagus. This cooked fish of the day changes, so maybe you'll get one with a bit less shrapnel? Keeping my rediscovered alcohol virginity intact was quite the challenge. I certainly remember the flavor of ebisu. It has a rich, deep, and heavy flavor for a lager. Its color is as radiant as the sun, and the head, silky smooth, like the finest of textiles. I almost shed a tear watching kimchi savor every last drop. We almost missed our dessert. We went down to pay and were told to return to our tatami prison for the final part of our meal. Our escape plan failed, but dessert was an interesting autumn-themed corn on a stick and an open persimmon. We definitely weren't expecting either of these foods for a meal cap. Bidnal Bean is a special find because of its Japanese underworld location and masterfully prepared high-quality sushi and sashimi. What we liked most about this restaurant was that it represented the sushi and sashimi experience you would find in Japan almost perfectly. It's a small, quaint business with an authentic Japanese vibe that's difficult to come by. For one of the best beers in the world on tap and a private place to get hammered with friends, Bidnal Bean is a fantastic choice. If you want to transport yourself to Japan for an evening without jumping on a plane, this is one of the most authentic Japanese restaurants you'll find in Busan. Well guys, that's another food video for the books. If you could, please hit the like button and subscribe for more Busan food related content if you haven't already. Kimchi and I really appreciate your support. Where will we go next? Until next time, peace.